Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is revisit um, a report we've looked at before called the State of AI. Um, and this is done, uh, well, actually, let me do this. Let me share my screen. Share. Oh, host disable participant sharing. So could Sully maybe or somebody enable the participant sharing? Ted? Ted's host tonight. Ted, Ted has Ted, it. Ted's host tonight. Oh, okay. Okay, let me share my screen. Try that again. Damn it. All right. And I will share the one with Roger's face in it. So, you know. <laughs> okay, hopefully also, you're seeing that Zoom thing and then this report. Are you guys seeing that? Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so this is one that we went over, oh, I guess about, December last year, maybe ish or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we kind of went over this report. And what we're doing tonight, though, is look, taking another run through it. Um, in this section, we'll get to it. They make a bunch of predictions about where AI is going to go in 2024. And I thought it'd be interesting just to look at that and say, were they right? Were they wrong? Where are they wrong? And just have some discussions we can kick off around this. Maybe they were right. But, you know, it zigged when they expected it to zag or whatever, that sort of thing. And typical group rules, especially for the new people here, we don't really have a lot of rules. If you have a thought or something, something just pops into your brain that kind of comes up, just unmute or just type something or whatever and just interrupt the presentation, you know. So it's very free form. We're a small enough group. We can do that. If we ever get to the point where we have 100 people on, we'll have to do something different. But I don't know if that'll ever happen. And I think, Jerry, tonight especially, we were kind of expecting the conversation. We don't have a specific agenda on this report. Mm -hmm. we'll let the conversation wander wherever it's interesting, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let me get started. I'm just going to go through a few of the slides. This report, um, you know, you can see it on the left-hand side. Um, I'm on slide one, and there are... Uh, 163 slides. We're not going to do all 163. <laughs> and everybody's going, sighing, making a sigh of relief. After <laughs> We'll probably do about eight or nine of them. And then um, the way this group goes is, you know, as we said, everybody is uh, talks and things like that. And that'll probably use up the next hour or so, mm -hmm. based on my uh, experience here. As okay. Julius found out. As Julius, as Julius is... 15 minute presentation, if I remember, Julius, you telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Turned into three weeks. <laughs> three. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it is. I really discussion. appreciate it. Yes, it is. And that's, that's the point. Everything um, here is to be discussed. So don't just let anything blow by you. If you don't, you know, if that doesn't sound right, just stop and we'll, we'll stop. Anyway, I'm just going to go through the first like 10 slides and then we'll jump around. Um, this is from a company oh, called uh, Air Street Capital, and Nathan Benich, I guess is how you pronounce the name, is the guy who put this together. There are some other people, I guess, that helped him on that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is just, they have five sections of it. it. It's research, industry, politics, safety, and predictions. We're going to focus a little bit on the research uh, maybe just a teeny, teeny bit on the industry. We're going to ignore politics because, you know, don't want to go there. Safety, nah, who cares about safety? And then we'll get to the predictions and see how well they did versus uh, this year in 2024 over versus what they said. And the re one of the reasons we're looking at this earlier is because when they're writing this, things were moving at a slightly different pace than they are now. You know, we're in this very frenetic pace where we're going as fast as we can, trying to learn things and break things and move fast. So I think they're a little, you know, they were a little um, pessimistic, perhaps, or not optimistic enough. <clears throat> okay, uh, they have a bunch of definitions. Um, hopefully nobody, uh, you know, these are just fairly straightforward type stuff. Um, and they have a bunch of little icons and things that you'll see them use, but don't don't worry about it. Uh, let's see here. Let's just move and see how they did in previous years, because I think this is important. Uh, you know, they're guessing too, like everybody else is, and they're not perfect. And in fact, 
you can see, um, as you imagined, red is not good. They kind of blew this and then, then the green ones were the ones they hit. So you can see, uh, let's see, uh, 10 billion parameter realm, deep, deep mind, 10 times larger than Gato, and probably just flamed out. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, let's see, and NVIDIA announced a strategic relationship with an AGI focused organization. Yeah, I think they're right in saying that NVIDIA is kind of playing with anybody that will give them enough money to play the game um, and you know provide the resources. Uh, state of the art, transformer trained 10 times more data porn than chinchilla. I don't even remember how many chinchilla had, but we are probably going way, way, way beyond whatever they were thinking of back then. Uh, let's say generative audio tools emerged that attract 100,000. Uh, yeah, they were kind of off on that. They were looking at over a million now. Um, I, you know, they did not see, I think, the expansion that we have in the uh, AI space. Somebody was going to invest a billion. Oh, Microsoft invested 10 billion in open AI. Uh, and this is all prior to the uh, drama to an <laughs> open AI. So who knows what that is? I guess, I guess now Microsoft and open AI are, are they on the outs? I don't know what there are. There's something, maybe somebody else can chime in there on that. What's that about Jerry? I hadn't heard that. You hadn't heard that? I just saw that today that open AI, uh, Microsoft is looking at other partners to work with other than open AI on this space so you know i don't know if there's a falling out or uh, an alignment of goals and things like that um i know microsoft you know, they, was very they were adamant about having everything in-house that they did not want to depend on open ai at all they they you know were stipulating that from the start hmm. yeah that that sounds very microsoft-ish if you will um, yeah i mean if but I mean, OpenAI is still a first party citizen of AWS. I mean, AWS has like, I mean, Ted and I looked at it a, a couple of weeks ago. It's like 20, 30, 40 first party APIs services that are direct to OpenAI. So people using uh, the OpenAI, I mean, AWS. When they call something, they are actually sorry, like, Azure. I, I I meant Azure. Um, Azure, yeah, Azure I on the mic okay, Microsoft yeah. side, yeah. But is that uh, so, is that something you think they're going to continue with, or will they look to bring that committed. in house? I mean, like I said, they're like primary services. Hmm. Like like you have S three at Amazon, which is storage. And right. I don't even I don't even know what Azure and freaking Google's names are for the. I call them the AWS name. And typically they will respond as long as I call it the correct AWS name. So I just use AWS nomenclature, but they have a version of open AI services that are at the same level as S3 in terms of you can use the built-in security layers. You can build, mm. use the built-in access layers and billing layers. All the administration is built into Azure for open AI services. Ah. Uh. Yeah, well, that, I'll, I'll throw out, I think there's two other business factors that might be coming into play. So uh, one is that, I mean, Microsoft's been doing really well with with um, open AI technology since, since their investment, right? Um, so I think that uh, if you saw recently, uh, Microsoft and Apple gave up their board seats mm -hmm. because... Uh, at OpenAI because they really want to maintain that arm's length relationship in name so that they don't get in trouble. So I think that could be part of what you're hearing about is just Microsoft trying to make sure that all the appearances are that they're two separate companies, regardless of whether or not OpenAI actually is under their thumb. They want it to look like OpenAI is not a subsidiary. Do you, right? do you've, is that just for regulatory potential to head off potential regulatory yeah. issues coming down, you know, monopoly, you know, because those, those, those are big I, enough companies that they're I that target. Monopoly and AI regulation, right? Like they yeah. don't want AI regulation that is directed towards open AI 
to then apply to the entirety of Microsoft's business. That would yep. be a disaster. Yeah. yeah. So this way they get to they get to have the best of both worlds, right? Uh, be, because of their 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 lead position, they get to tell AI what open AI what to do, but they get to sort of pretend that you know anything bad that happens there doesn't affect us or whatever. Um, and then the other thing, which is a little surprising, is OpenAI just launched Search GPT, which is a direct competitor to Bing and Google, mm -hmm. and is not clear whether Microsoft is unhappy about that, will in the long run profit from that or what. But so I think those are two potential businessy things that have, you know, not necessarily anything to do with sort of the core tech. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is this whole dance that's going on in the business, if we want to call it the business right now is very, very interesting. Who's partnering with whom, uh, you know, what is the relationship? who's in lead and who's following that sort of thing. It's, it's going to take a while to shake out and maybe it never will. It'll just be constantly changing. I don't know. Does, <laughs> does anybody have a couple sentence summary of, of what Microsoft's doing in terms of developing their own language model? I've not heard much on that okay. front okay. myself. I don't know about I anybody else. Ted I haven't either. Or Sully, I don't know, you know, um, I don't have anything current or any inside information, but everything I've heard is that they built their stuff on top of open AI. It's not like they, from the ground up, were able to train, you know, some LLM to compete with GPT-4, you know? So yeah, even if, if they say like, oh, our co-pilot or our this or our that are not literally open AI's thing, that doesn't mean that they didn't, you know, stand on the shoulders of right, what they got. Right. Yeah, and that is... You know, when I was part of the office team, they did that with the office products. I worked on PowerPoint and they bought that from a couple of guys, you know, essentially and brought it in house. And then we, you know, we spent, uh, what, two and a half years making it uh, off uh, Office 95, I guess. Yeah, that was the, you know, when Windows 95, the start me up thing, blah, blah, blah. And we did the office thing. That's, that's what part of my day was spent doing was bringing that code in and, you know, making it work within that suite. So it is not uncommon for them to go out and bring stuff in, I guess I should say. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, semiconductor NVIDIA dominance, things like that. Uh, yeah. NVIDIA is still dominant as far as I can tell. I don't know what you guys are hearing. If you're hearing anything else, um, obviously Google would like people to be using their platform, but I think they have dramatically lower share. But the one thing I did hear about NVIDIA is, you know, open AI is using up such a large percentage of their stuff. They, they are running out of things to give other customers to, or pushing other customers to back burner type thing. I don't know what you guys are hearing along those lines. I'm but. just starting to hear rumblings of, of people um, being less gung-ho about AI investments. I don't know if that applies more to hardware versus, you know, other kinds of, but, you know, like early in the year, it was just like, oh, you have AI in your name? Here's a million dollars, you know? <laughs> um and it seems like maybe people are starting to come to their senses a little bit. Yeah, well, we've seen this, you know, in tech before, right? Every every one of these little bubbles we go through, the money, money. everybody tries to get the money in first. And Sully, you probably know this much better than I would, but they try to get the money in first. And then it's, it's kind of like you go drinking and then you have the hangover afterwards and you're going, oh man, what did I do? <laughs> you know? So, thing. I mean, part of it's also just that the, the the big investments are kind of tailored have, have tapered down like you can't give stable diffusion another billion dollars they just they just got it you know yeah. and uh and secondarily that the economy has right. it, in a world that was like oh my god inflation and then we actually looked at inflation inflation wasn't that bad oh my god interest rates are going to go down that'd be great and then they didn't and and so all that kind of 
holy shit, this is the weirdest election year in the history of mankind <laughs> that settled out. And that settled out kind of started happening at the end of Q1. And so the ability, the liquidity in the market beyond AI has increased significantly. And that has made it less necessary to kind of focus all the efforts there. And capital is going into a lot of different sectors. The debt markets have opened up a bit. Um, even, even with interest rates high, mortgages went down, right? Like by 50 right. basis points over, over the last uh, few months. So all that has, has, it has made AI less critically important than it was to the financial markets six months ago. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there are calls for regulation. And maybe this is kind of what we were talking to uh, before. Um, that hasn't occurred yet, but you know that's you know that's out there, right? That's kind of the, like the boogeyman that's hanging out there. Um, that everybody doesn't want to be the first guy to to get a bunch of regulation brought brought down on a lot of this stuff that really may gum up the works and things like that. Uh, let's see here: hundred million will be invested in dedicated AI alignment organizations, and Thropic got four billion. Okay, I personally think of them more as an AI research company, but maybe are they pushing safety on their end too? Is that kind of pushing that? Ted's rape, nodding his head and he probably knows better than I do about that, but yeah. Yeah, I, they mean, are... I mean, safety and alignment is their, is their number one goal. Okay. Oh, that's, that's good. We, we do need that. We don't want these models wandering off into the hinterlands and things like that. Um, okay, major uh, user-generated content. Reddit negotiates commercial settlement with OpenAI has a six-year license for additional Shutterstock oh, oh, training data and all that good stuff. And I'm glad I posted my images on some Shutterstock and got zero for that, you know, when I was used to be into photography. <laughs> Thanks, assholes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, okay. Moving on now that I'm upset. All right, so that was their 2022 versus predictions versus reality. And you can see, you know, they, you know, what it, I don't know what their batting average is there, a little over 50% maybe or something like that. If we look at those numbers. Uh, so that's not bad. I mean, you know, things are moving. Although I think things are moving a little faster now. So I don't know they'll do just as well. But with that said, um, Let's see, where are we time-wise? We still have time here. Um, let's go on and um, take a look at what they're predicting for 2023, uh, you know, this same stuff. And obviously they don't have the evidence for it and things like that, but we'll see if we think they can actually do this here. Or 2024, excuse me. All right, so that is slide 157. Just jumping right down. And if we want to go back to find kind of their uh, data for this and why they came up with these, we can move backwards. Okay. Um, here's their 10 predictions they had at the end of last year. Some Hollywood grade production will use generative AI for visual effects. Hasn't that already occurred? I think I've, you know, and it, I don't know if I'd call it Hollywood grade, but I think a lot of the independence producers and things like that have gone that way. If nothing else, it, just save money. I've seen the demos. I haven't heard of anything in production. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know some guys that do, you know, like work the, used to be called the ND circuit. I don't know what you call it now. You know what I mean? Uh, like the small guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they are very, very hyped up on doing that. But uh they don't think the tools are fully there yet, but they can get, yeah. you know, if you can't like pan out of a scene into another scene. You can just have the main character in the scene, look left, look right, do whatever type things. Um, in fact, if you go up on YouTube, I noticed there are some really cool videos where they take uh, like these 1950 movies and things like that, morph characters into them or redo them in modern stuff. And I, I think what you're seeing is some of these you know, uh, film students, for lack of a better term, 
are being able to do some pretty impressive stuff with generative AI. And I would not be surprised to see one of those guys be the ones that create a Hollywood grade production uh, yeah. using generative AI. Yeah, coming in through the indie <clears throat> side, I would I would agree on that. That seems, but so what you're saying is they're doing them right now, but it's not like text to video, it's, it's kind of video plus text to video. Yeah, if you go, if you just go to YouTube and spend some time and uh, let me just what see I, if I- What do I search in YouTube? Uh, if you just start looking at like old movies and you'll see that they have like, they'll put like modern movie stars and old 1950 movies and things like that. Oh, really? Yes, 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 Go yes. Ahead. Or, or you know, um, it's just weird. And you're going like, wait, that Luke Skywalker in a 1950s, uh, you know, thing where he's running around with this ray blaster and it's got like the, you know, uh, the little pieces yeah. of glass they had, you know, the big one to the small one and everything like that. And, and oh, uh, I haven't it, seen that. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it's really quite, quite well done. And if you read up what they're doing, it's like a two man, one guy and another, maybe another guy doing the tech side that, that put together, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds of video, you know, so huh. that just that shows might be a you. Fun, that might be a fun session to yeah, yeah, pull a yeah. bunch of those together. Yeah, that sounds yeah, up, it is. That, that seems like that's up Julius's uh, <laughs> tree right there. I'm, I'm on the audio side. On the uh, on the video side, I did hear that people are using it, but they're they're not talking about it because the actors are so up in arms and everybody's all up mm. in arms about it being replaced by it. But but they're using it uh, on the sly, um, you know. And and that really is the right model, I think, is you know to uh, use these tools to accelerate your productivity as a professional. And, and the only downside really is that you do become so effective that um, you don't need as many people to do something. <laughs> and that, that process has been going on forever. Like when I played community theater, you know, the whole percussion section was one guy and a synthesizer. And uh, he was a real drummer and he was really good, but, um, but he had his pads and he could do anything. And um, it, it made more room in the orchestra pit, you know, and it was, it was progress, um, but um, it does displace people. You know, you have more productivity from fewer people, but it's the people that are going to be doing all this. Yeah, I, or, you, or I, you have the same number of people, but just more produced. There you go. That's yeah, right. Exactly. So since the robots will be doing all the work, everybody will be living on basic income and doing anything they want, and <laughs> we we'll can just all be trying. That's right. Trying we can to all entertain each other. Exactly. <laughs> It'll just be exactly. community theater and. And whatever your art is, you know, um, so so the real the real goal will just be to get attention any way you can to uh, be entertaining and to um, form groups like this and and have a good time. And so that's the future is just you know have a good time. But somebody needs to stay on top of it, you know. Okay. And we're, and we're working on that, right? Yeah. Can we also touch on um, some unintended use cases where, you know, those super fakes that um, create mm -hmm. some videos, kind of like, oh, some whatever famous character is talking about something or give a, a statement that they never actually did in real yeah. life and kind of reputations on the line. They kind of, you know, uh, super fake some, uh, I don't know, cute ladies' faces and then put on other uh, content and kind of pr pretend that's produced by themselves in real life and made their reputation dented. Like, like uh, I don't know, did they predict that kind of, you know, trend would happen and any guardrails or any policy hopefully soon we can have, be, you know, out? So the we way that they the presented all this was in very positive sense, right? So a Hollywood grade production makes use of generative AI for visual effects instead of someone uses open AI to steal Scarlett Johansson's voice and face mm -hmm. and produce video. So, I mean, part of what you're seeing here too is a, a, a broadly optimistic view of AI versus some of the, these like harsh realities that you're asking about, right? Right. Although point Can I mention two the was... solution? I just want to tell, I just want to throw the solution out there. I'm sure you know, um, uh, and probably everybody knows this, but we have the solution. I mean, how do we do it on financial transactions? How do we do it on GitHub? It's. I think that uh, we just all let video... the Russians steal our stuff. No, oh, sorry, no, what, we have. What was your answer? We have authentication. We have, we have um, public-private key authentication, 
And so I think, you know, very quickly, all, uh, at least you're going to have the option to only look at, you know, digitally signed content. So I you mean, don't get- Julius, Actually, I would Julius. love to agree with you, right? But like the five largest heists in history have happened in the last 10 years, right? Are I you mean, talking like, about like the, the Bitcoin stuff? Yeah. I mean, when, <laughs> when have you ever heard of more than $5 billion being stolen from a bank? Well, that's just somebody screwed up. I mean, the technology. But, but that's the point, right? Like the more power, the more a little screw up creates these problems, right? Yeah. And that oh, and that yeah. I think is a very Our... legitimate perspective, which is. Well, that's uh, why it, the it, AI it... needs to take over. So if it was a, an AI chatbot <laughs> running the show. But, AI I mean, would be better you know, or, the or worse. Fate, the they would have done it right. Because right? well, you know... AI knows how to fix the problem too. In, in five years, you know, the, you would rather have your AI uh, agent set up your authentication and uh, the whole pipeline and, and do the rollout of oh, that's your a upgrades. Great. We'll have AI do the authentication for us. That way we can be sure it's always authentic. Well, the AI, right, AI right, doesn't until the care. AI decides it doesn't want, want me in the middle of that authentication process, for God's sake. Well, no, the, no, no, it, no it's, it's when, when uh, Putin puts one of his stooges in charge of that AI, that's when we have a problem. <laughs> The AI yeah, is not going to How do you know it's a? How do you know who's a stooge and who's not a stooge? So, <laughs> so, so I'm going to I'm going to jump That's in here. That's a good question. Before we go down like that rabbit hole, <laughs> I do think I do think you're right, Too Julius. Late. Like, we could have authentication of every video on like Instagram, and yes. it's not in Instagram's financial interests to reduce the right. number of videos circling around by mm -hmm. authenticating them. And so that's the problem we have is that unless the user say, I'm going to boycott Instagram, unless you say this video was taken by Julius of blah, 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 and I can authenticate it with Julius's public key, I won't use your service. If users don't say that, then they actually make more money by having all this crap and sensational stuff and whatever. But, the, but then they're the evil player, not not the generative AI. I'm on board that's, with Julius. That's, I, that's where I'm I, agreeing with Julius's yeah, initial yeah. statement that it, it, not saying it's perfect, not saying that there won't be screw ups, there won't be heists, there won't be whatever, but we have not even tried to authenticate things. And there are tools. Yeah, right. And I, we can I, do I, it. I, I agree with Julius and Ariel to answer your question. I think that the deep fakes are really only a problem in the beginning. Once everybody knows that deep yeah. fakes exist, um, then they don't have the same power. And what what's missing today is I think Julius's Hillary Clinton authentication. Said that in 2015. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out so well for her, did it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. That was I wish I were as optimistic as the two of you guys are about humanity. I, <laughs> I, I well, think human beings are... I'm not optimistic about humanity. I'm simply agreeing that we have a relatively simple technology that would work like 98%. Right. It's and something we're not we can fix. Trying. But Ted, we can fix it. Ted, how many light bulbs do you have in your house and how many have you replaced in the last 10 years? When did they go out? Sure we we, we have had light bulbs that last forever for over 150 years. Yeah. LEDs are and going. And you have none of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And can, you're yeah. talking incandescent light bulbs, right? So, and yeah. everybody knows that, yeah. that, that the toasters that were made in, in the 1950s will last forever and they got rid of them. Yeah. Planned yeah. obsolescence. I, mean, I, I the, the, the force of, of capitalism is amazing in incredible ways, <laughs> both positive and negative. And, and yep. the, they're almost immutable in my personal view. But people so. have a choice. People can vote with their feet, and parents and can they do. protect their children. And they did children. in 2016, like I just said. <laughs> They're just well, that... a lot dumber than you give them credit for, Julius. <laughs> well, I'm going to move us on to number two, since since somebody said the word voting here. Okay. Uh, if you read that, a generative AI media company will be investigated for, in a uh, the U.S. 2024 election. Circuit, I'm going to assume that just means all the general elections or things like that. I mean, I think we're really, <laughs> you know, we're getting close to that now. I mean, I'm hearing, you know, rumors of deep fakes floating out already in the election and things like that. So, 
Yeah, yeah, maybe we need to have that technology that makes sure the movie is correct, make sure the video 30 second commercial is correct too, or is, is real, so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that they will probably, you know, do better on some of these than they did on their, than this year's, um, but okay. Uh, Self-improving AI agents will crush state-of-the-art in complex environments like game playing, tools, and science. Uh, I don't comments? think we've seen evidence of this one yet. Okay. How about in I terms of science? In science, like, uh, um, holy crap, what is the one that does like uh, the protein molecules and things like that? Yeah, alpha, alpha fold. fold is handcrafted. It's not. It's not agents like like mm. you use llama index, lang chain, whatever, whatever, and the agents just talk to each other and self improve. Okay, so it's just a whole bunch of good programming then. A lot of AI, a lot of good machine learning. Yeah. All the tricks in the yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's good. But I still think that you know we'll probably see the self-improving agents and things like that come out, whether, I don't know where, I don't even does know where. Mean, I is think... this like RL? Is that what they mean by self-improving? Or like no, alpha I, go? I think, you know, for self-improving, self for self-improving, I think they're talking about the next level up from Langchain where they can talk to each other and improve over time. Hmm. So I don't have... feel like we've seen that. Yeah, I don't see I much don't, movement. In do that, we really? You know, that's, I mean, we don't start. have, other than in an RL context, um, do we have models that are self-improving? They You train them, but they don't really learn from then on, right? None of the models, that's, large mangroves, right. do we have That's now? why I'm saying, I don't, think, I, think, I don't think we've seen this. Yeah. We, right. We've seen where definitely, like, if you wanted a system to book your, your seven-day vacation, you can do agents and if you have multiple agents it might do better than just like a single prompted you know gpt you know go go create an itinerary for me right but it's not self-improving to roger's point mm. sorry is the, the self-improving here means uh reinforcement learning i think that's an example of it oh okay. yeah I, it's the way I they train the robots yeah, it could be RL, but it could just be some other paradigm where agents use memory, they talk to each other in some way, they get better over time. And I just don't think we've seen where LLMs are that good that they can sort of keep getting better. You, you know, know it, you know, with a huge context buffer, you could just let it keep growing. You know, it could have the yeah. complete yeah. history. Form. That could be yeah. an example. Yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah. would be a form, yeah. Wait, yeah, isn't pushing... there is is there a setup that you have a paired uh, models that one is the other one's critique and it kind of like bumps between each other to actually improve? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so those kinds of setups, I think so far what we've seen is that the intrinsic error levels in each model prevent mm -hmm. them from just converging to some super better thing. I mean, that's what I think they're saying in number three is that they, they're predicting that what you just said would crush state-of-the-art single models. And I don't think we've seen that yet. Yeah, I don't, have we even seen it try, them trying to do it? Have you heard of them even trying? In other words, that's, an, that's a, a kind of a training method where you're continuing to evolve your weights, et cetera, um, by letting these these agents talk, an actor-critic type of thing, something like that. I haven't well, if you heard think of them all... trying that. It's like every time they have a new model, don't they start from scratch and build mm. build again? I mean, there's a lot of research papers out there. So people are doing yeah. different kinds of distillation and this yeah. and that. But I don't know. I could be reading it wrong. I, I, I'm really reading this because they say agents. This isn't about yeah. training models and building whatever. This is really about, oh, my God. Like, again, when this was written, GPT-4 is amazing. And then Langchain came out. And so it's like if I just have this actor-critic setup of four different agents they're going to talk to each other, and next thing you know, they're going to be superhuman, able to crush state-of-the-art and design antibiotics better than anything else. I think that's kind of 
that's the vibe of the, of the prediction that I get. And, and people have tried and, you know, there was chain of thought, tree of thoughts, this, that, you know, reflection. We've talked about some of those things, but yeah. ultimately they all seem to have kind of a glass ceiling that, that it doesn't just keep going up and up and up. Yeah. And specifically in gaming, they were, at least for this year, still in the stage where they try to catch bad behaviors and try to find those patterns to not uh, on the other side of, you know, like a good good behavior rewarding or or NPC improvement. I, I don't think they're there yet at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Google Deep Mind was uh, starting out that way with uh, self-play. You know, the uh, Atari games were first. And mm -hmm. then they went all the way up to AlphaGo, and uh, it was kind of a refreshing break in that kind of evolution when uh, GPTs came out, where you know you just train it. And uh, I was kind of surprised that you know it's just the context buffer is all it knows, and once you erase that, it's it's a complete reset. I think I think they've been doing the self play um, or the self you know improvement stuff um, in the back room, and they just haven't got anything that they. Or, or able to sign off on as safe enough mm -hmm. and understood enough. I, I think it's been going on for years and it's still, they're still uh, experimenting. And I, and I think it might've been what, what happened at OpenAI that got Sam Altman fired for a while, you know, just some really scary stuff that came out in the lab um, on a level that just people thought was out of control. And, and so uh, it ended up blowing it up. And now Ilya Suskever has got a whole company focused on nothing but getting a handle on that. <laughs> And, yeah. and doing it safely and having no products in the meantime. So maybe that's where that whole thing went out of open AI. I, you know, we'll see. But I, I just I think it's I think it's just it's kind of like a nuclear reactor where you're taking the carbon rods out and and uh, you just hope, <laughs> you know, is it gonna explode or is it gonna be okay? You know? It's like that Jenga game with the carbon rods, so right? You're you're like pulling them up, waiting for the whole pile to sort of collapse on itself. How many can I pull? The most yeah, to me, that's the only scary thing. The only thing that, that scares me in, in the AI world is one of those kinds of systems, you know, probably developed by the Department of Defense, and it's a <laughs> warrior bot, right? And it's designed to survive on the battlefield and protect its own. And and then that thing gets a notion that because it's trained on all of humanity um, accidentally, you know, it gets the idea, it gets into some little latent space loop that it's got to survive. And so <laughs> it, you know, takes over. You know, at first it recruits a bunch of bots, you know, and gets a, a little, you know, subversive army going. Nobody knows what's going on. And then finally they just sort of take over a factory that's like some critical thing where they can like reproduce themselves and defend themselves. And I think and, and we're just didn't gone. Schwarzenegger do that movie a while back? Exactly, the Terminator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I think you're plot? going, Julius. <laughs> yeah, it's a. All right, yeah. I'm gonna move us. I'm gonna move us it's along. A, it's here. an Asimov plot. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty standard science fiction, I think, but. I, I actually, yeah. you know, I, so I worry we, about do we? I, I guess the general consensus is, is that we don't see this happening by the end of 2024. No. Is that? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. We'll Trans see. Are safe. Okay. So it, when we com do their comparison for next year, we'll we'll say we told them so it wasn't going to happen. Okay. Uh, number four, tech IPO markets will unthaw, and we'll see at least what much. For an AI focused company, hasn't that kind of? I don't know. I mean, don't we kind of have that today? Aren't I guess? I think they're talking about specifically IPO and IPO markets, if not yet. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. But I would think if they do unthaw that, that is an obvious target direction for the money. Oh yeah, to go to. easy, yeah. please. You, you know, yeah. And I think that's why every company, right, asking for money these days has AI somewhere in their spiel you know, that they're, they're giving out. So, yeah. uh, okay, here. Uh, Gen AI scale is crazy, sees group spend greater than 1 billion to train is. Are, aren't we doing that now? I mean, isn't Google spending that sort of money? I mean, it's internal spend, you know, between their, their no, I, I, I think I think people have. Uh... Uh, started, you know, looking at things like, like, like Mistral, you know, GPT-4 mm -hmm. did the, the mixture of experts and whatnot. Um, and then uh, I don't remember what Meta said they spent on the 400 billion 
model that they just released, but it was less than that. So I think people are, you know, not opening up the wallets that much. So mm -hmm. said another way, there was this trend for bigger and bigger, and that right. trend seems to have flattened. Mm. Okay. I'm, I guess I'm a little surprised at that. Is it just because the performance gain was not worth the expense? Yeah, yeah, because it's a, it's a, that power law scaling, right? Yeah, so, yeah exactly. You know. Yeah, you, yeah, you can only, there's kind of an asymptotically approaching some sort of, uh, I don't want to call it ceiling, but some sort of level, you know, of, of, of uh, function. Okay, yep. uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, US FTC or CMA, I guess that I assume the UK CMA is similar to the FTC. We'll investigate the open AI deal on competitive grounds. I don't think that's going to happen. My, my sense says that because there are, that's kind of a done thing. And I, I think as we discussed before, they're doing everything they can to keep it from happening. And there's other you know, those organizations tend to get fixated on that new shiny problem over there. And I think there's other problems they're going to fixate on, in, especially in the next year. In the U.S., it's an election year. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Um, you know, there's just too many other distractions, shall we say, going on. And, you know, just in the last two and a half weeks, right, or two weeks, we've seen a lot of distractions in the U.S., uh, I would let's... never bet against European regulators raising their hands and saying, we'll take this one, though. Hmm. You're a good point. But remember, They've gone I mean, after you can't all sorts of... part of the EU anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm surprised that they did not highlight EU and they highlighted UK, which I I don't know why. I would have, I would have personally picked the EU. Maybe you thought that they thought that was too easy of a pick to say you. <laughs> Just because they complain about everything. I don't know. I mean, there might be some political dynamics that I'm not aware of there too, though. So, yeah, that's true. Maybe, maybe they have big investments in the EU. Don't want to tick anybody off. <laughs> Things like that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. High limited progress on global AI. Gov oh, I see. Beyond Agreed. high livable. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> limited progress, right? You got one side that doesn't want any sort of governance on it, and you got the other side that maybe wants some, um, but they don't want to tick off, you know, whatever, the financial backers and things like that. I thought um, I saw that the, the latest Llama 405 billion uh, is not available in, was it the EU, Canada, uh, because of whatever regulation mm. um, and some so Meta was just like, we don't want to try to prove that we didn't violate copyright. So we're just not going to make it available to you at all. Too bad, right? So sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could be a, a time sink or an expense sink that might be spent elsewhere better, better spent from their stance. So I think uh, they're let's... probably going to be right for number seven. Okay. Uh, number eight, then, financial students launch GPU debt fund to replace VC equity dollars for computer funding. Interesting. Are we going to be able to buy into a, a fund? I don't even know how what this works. What they're basically saying is that they're, they're going to start looking at training dollars as CapEx mm. versus OpEx, and that you're Got creating it. a durable asset, <clears throat> and that the... The contributing ingredients of the durable asset are compute dollars. Interesting. Have you seen anything like that realizing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I, mean, I think especially that's... with with uh, Silicon Valley Bank's demise, the the race right now towards <laughs> debt is just picking up the the biggest easiest deals by all the other banks because it. You kind of imagine the, the big, um, I don't know, a big whale beaches itself. Nobody's going after the the marginal stuff. Everybody's still going after the main muscle for the next year. And that's still happening to this day. So I, I, I don't see this happening. 
Okay. All Me. right. That's. <laughs> you want to cross your toes to Sully on that one or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, financial institutions, whatever. Uh, I don't even try to guess what they'll do. Uh, an AI generated song breaks the billboard top 100 or Spotify's top, what, one of these lists type things. Um, interesting. I think this is going to probably happen in my two cents just because uh, people in the music industry have often embraced technology much faster than the general public and things like that. You know, synthesizers, all sorts of things like that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, why wouldn't some hip hop artists or something like that, they may sing the words and maybe not, or just sing along with some sort of AI generated sort of thing to do some sort of rap number or something like that. But it seems to me you could My train a model Millie to do it. And his best friend Vanilli yeah. are, uh, are in disagreement <laughs> of this one. Yeah. I think I, it probably uh, has happened. Um, <laughs> it, there's a video, there's a good video by uh, Rick Beato on um, on the fact that most of the Spotify uh, hits are um, or, or streams are just one guy, um, and he lives really close to Spotify headquarters, <laughs> and so you know it's it's just clear somebody's just cranking out most of the uh, you know the, uh, the the big hits and and mo and capturing most of the revenues revenue so they don't have to pay any royalties it's all within Spotify so um, somebody was visiting Rick Beato who uh, had, has written a book in this topic. Um, I can find the link and post it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, that is how the record company started, right? RCA and things like that. They owned everything. They owned all the thing. They owned the studios. They owned the musicians. They owned the artists. And uh, you know, was it was it Ray Charles? I guess was the first one to actually ask to own his own property that he produced i think it was ray charles way back in the day which was uh i think they had made a movie about that didn't they or something like that something like that so the yeah way, I as, could... we're, as we're going okay. through this list you can see that the 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 people who produce this these are these are investors so i mean yes. let, like the question asked earlier about you know deep fakes and how bad that will be and you know how many people's lives will be like they're not looking into that side of it you know even when they talk about um uh ethics and whatever they're really just talking about like well are the big companies going to get regulated because they're just looking at it from that sort of investment angle right right makes sense um all right and the last one they, the, at least on their list and then i thought maybe we could think up a few more was uh, as inference workload uh, and costs grow significantly, a large AI company acquires and builds an inference focused AI chip company. Hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, those are two different skill sets, in my opinion, but any thoughts? Anybody has on that? Somebody will come out with a chip that. Just as inference, well, I guess. I don't think it's going to be new. I think it's just a matter of does somebody want to acquire an existing producer for vertical mm. um, integration? And I, I, I don't know that I can handicap it. I, to, to my knowledge, it has not happened so far. Yeah, I don't know I that I can it. handicap it. Nor do I know why this matters. To be honest with you, right? Like, well, it should be a cost and scale thing that's going to matter. If you if you can get these algorithms running in the right way on the right silicon, they should be a lot faster and a lot cheaper, I would think, and a lot more energy efficient too. You know, I'm actually yes. though okay. I I would say like if you look at the history of purchasing inference technologies, there there's not a good history of inference technologies having good ROI versus just buying the asset. Or sort of buying buying the product. The product hmm. meaning the inference. Yeah. So like let yeah. let's say Halo is the example, right? Like, okay, Halo chips are doing really well. I'm OpenAI. I spend four hundred billion dollars a year on inference. W would I be better off buying Halo as a company or buying the chip and then letting Halo continue to compete on the open market? So next year when I go out to buy another hundred million dollars of chips, 
I'm buying the best. I, I, oh, okay. I You're focusing I think on what Ted said is exactly right. Like, is there actual legitimate value in vertical integration? And does that really influence anybody else outside the industry? Okay. I was picking up less on the vertical integration and more just on the, the inference chip side of it. Um, that I see that seems like that to me, that seems like that's going to happen somewhere along the line. Um, the algorithms that get pushed down into the silicon. Yeah, again, again I, I think it'll happen. I just, I don't think it'll matter that much. It's, it's more, I think like that it'll happen and then, then that'll happen. And then a new algorithm will come up and then it will go away and it will not be important anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's moving too yeah. fast right now. It's changing. Yeah. So Sally, you, you, you mentioned like, why does this matter? I, I, I don't know if one of the, the angles is if I'm an investor, maybe I'm going to make a bunch of money because, because I own whatever ah, and they get bought out. That's, that's why it might but, matter. But I think that actually that upside possibility, the much bigger risk is the downside possibility that Mamba or Matt Mulfrey or something else comes along and then all of a sudden there's a little bit of a free-for-all because NVIDIA matrix multiplies are no longer automatically king of the hill. That You've got to really yeah. So what Ted's saying is short NVIDIA. Short NVIDIA. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good advice. We're definitely in a bubble, right? Well, as soon as I bought the stock, it's gone nowhere but down. Just follow what I do and do the opposite, you know, in terms <laughs> of buying. Just if I buy, you sell, you know, you short it or whatever. Um, Warren Buffett thinks we're at a bubble that is um, already past the year 2000 level. So, you know, in other words, hmm. the Internet bubble that, that you know, popped around then, um, you know, was, uh, the, you know, the tech bubble. And then this one, uh, he, you know, according to his metrics, I think he divided the uh, S and P by the total GDP of the of the of the country, and uh, that that's he says that's the most fundamental metric. And, and I love that, Warren Buffett, but he has been wrong about everything related to technology since the get go. That's really? the one thing. Oh yeah, I mean if you but, if you read his, his his underlying first principle is don't invest in technology. Technology is an ephemeral thing that adds to efficiency. Invest in efficiency. Hmm. He bought and, Apple. Yeah, yes, he did. And ten and years, twenty years late, but <laughs> too, too, too late. Yeah, exactly. He bought, yeah. he bought it at exactly the wrong time. But yeah, he likes railroads and insurance. Yeah, and that's right. And so like, I, and... I, I love in insurance, right? Like insurance, 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 right? Um, mm -hmm. But he's missed the entire tech window and every time yeah. he's hit something apple's a great example ibm's another example that he had to unload um he does it at the wrong time and so mm -hmm. I, in his fundamentals he's inarguably amazing in his tech visionary nature i'd, I'd give him an f <laughs> you're harsh man <laughs> but probably true I, um i feel like uh the ai um like where the AI dollars are going on the, the, the stock market is much more concentrated than previous bubbles. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know enough about financials to know what that means, but I just feel like, yeah, this may be a bubble, but it just, it's weird to handicap because it's a different kind of bubble. It's a, it's a single four letter <laughs> bubble. Yeah. Two letters. What are the other two? Uh, isn't it NVDA? No? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But, you know, you got to think. That's got a, NVIDIA's got a, you know, I don't know. But I mean, like, Mike, Microsoft's up. Jerry, you said Apple's up since since their Apple's uh, developer Apple. thing. And, uh -huh. you know, it's like, but it's not like these small companies are, you know, what everyone's trying to say they do AI, but... I don't really see the bubble. I see the bubble as being like super concentrated, which yeah, I don't know if that's good, bad, or what, but it's just, it feels different, you know? I, I think the problem really comes down to resources. Who's got the money to get the resources? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's a good and point. And it is the big companies, you know? So, so if, if, Trump, if, if, 
Well, if, for the dot coms, you didn't you didn't need to have hundreds of millions of dollars to start up a new. That's right. The barrier to entry was much, you know, orders of magnitude lower. Yeah. And I think the problem is to play the game at the scale that you want to play the game at, you just need cubic dollars right now. And if, you know, Matt Maltfrey, we talked about that. And that's one of the things that interested me about it is it looked like it, you know, had an maybe or, or something like that technology would more I don't want to use the word democratize, but may, reduce the barriers to entry, you know, but I don't know. I don't know if that's true or if that's going to just flame out, but at least somebody's looking at it, you know, which I think is a good thing. So we get, well, once they we get, prove it, they'll get acquired by somebody. Well, yeah. I mean, what's the technology? If the technology proves out, right? Yeah. yeah then, then somebody will probably acquire it and hopefully they won't just back burner it or something like that. We'll just, you know, throw all the guys in the lab, feed them, you know, 50, 500,000, $700,000 a year. So they're happy and give them all the hardware they want and then just not do anything with it. You know? That like happens that. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, we very, know it does happen. You know, I'm not very optimistic though, because I feel like even if you get an order of magnitude out of some new bat mole free thing or whatever, Okay, mm -hmm. so then instead of it taking four hundred billion dollars to train GPT four, it takes you forty million dollars. <laughs> I mean, yeah. forty million that's is real money, doable, but it's still like, and that's just for one training, right? That yeah. that that's not all the prep work and all the whatever. What, so, like, how many companies can really even afford to throw that around? Well, yeah, and I completely agree, and. You know, this this is a problem the industry has right now, right? Is you have only enough, it's so difficult that only a few players can play the game. It's maybe a better way to phrase it. I feel like a yes or no on that one. Um, somebody's talking about the access um, or the lower the competition, or well, whatever, the, I guess, lower the entrance for the competition. Barrier I to feel entry. Like, yeah, <laughs> entry. I feel like um, smart people now just uh, use AI as a, like just a rapper, like as, as long as you know how to rap what's available and somehow, you know, have your new label on it. That's your company doing similar whatever services um, for a different company, different individual, and you charge for that. And that's like a very low entry cost. And it just kind of mm -hmm. start off of somebody's like, say, open AI um, result or um, product. And then. It's just like, um, you know, kind of a secondhand of selling somebody else's product using your packaging, right? So for mm -hmm. that sense, it's really easy to enter the competition. Not, I've been, I just started, but I've been attending different um, talks or events right around. It like everything has to be labeled AI, machine learning, and whatever type <laughs> of AI, whatever thing. But when you go there, like tons of people sign up, you go there, maybe 1% actually know what they're talking about. It's like the hype is really high and the people just like, they say they have AI products or they have AI whatever service. But when you ask just two sentences more, you know, oh, they just like, you know, another, another packaging company. So for that, mm. it's like a two, um, kind of a two in parallel kind of a develop um, process going. One is those big players spending big money doing something new that's never done before. Well, um, the, in the parallel universe, right, all of the small players kind of like printing their different packaging, different labels, and just, just grab what's available and pack it differently and sell for pro uh, profits, right? Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Yeah. It's never like that in the past. Well, I don't know so, if it's never, never been like that, but well, I mean... Yeah, yeah. it happens it, whenever it's possible. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah I, you I, can I buy a bunch okay. of tickets. If you buy a bunch of tickets on Ticketmaster and then sell them at double the price, you know, uh, stuff like that <laughs> happens as much as it can. That yeah, would never yeah, happen, sorry. Julius. Let I me mean, everybody. What I was trying to say, it's not like um, um, it never happened in the past, but more like it's in the past. It's more of a regular products, like uh, you can like you know anything, like the tickets you mentioned or yeah. light bulb, some, some earlier mentioned, or something mm -hmm. actual products that's not technical at all. And now mm -hmm. that trend is moving, like, you know, packaging the products that's technical. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what I mean by like kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it is interesting. 
it takes a while for people to know where to get it at the right price. And so there's this opportunity exactly. period. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With back to arbitrage, um, like back then we had no internet. We just started. The people didn't have that clarity or access or whatever way to find the information. So it wasn't that, mm -hmm. right? Like a uh, straightforward. So everything, those people mm -hmm. now, back then, same people here doing that um, profit of out of uh, those uh, on clarity. It just kind of, again, history repeats, but it's just now wrap around AI. Like, yeah, yeah. it'll take a while. It, it seems yep. like though, so if you think of it as just repackaging the same product in slightly different kind of low cost wrapper around that, mm -hmm. that's that's one area and it, it, yeah, it feels like, I don't know, that's, that's short lived. But if, if you look at it and think of it more of, a, you can still do training, you can use the foundation and then do the training around specific workflows, specific tasks. I think there is opportunity for smaller players to add value, real value in that. Yeah. In that mm -hmm. thing. Right now, the people that are building the large language models, it's like they're trying to build everything into one model. And that's yeah. really expensive. But once you have like the ability to learn in the large uh, language model, and then you, you're adding the specific um, I don't know, AI workflows, uh, AI knowledge or thought processes. Uh, it seems that smaller players can add value on top of it at that point. With some you know, difficulty of getting data though, right? Right. Like, well, but, yeah. yeah, but it, there may be no need as much. markets. Yeah. You need right. less and it's for smaller markets. So it's, yeah. If you have access have your own to rag. that smaller market. Right. Does this, know. does this become more like, um, you know, an operating system, right? Yep. Windows yep. or whatever is this big thing. Remember back 30, 40 years ago, a lot of people were like, I'm going to build my own kernel. I'm going to build my, you know, da -da -da. I'm going to build a, you know, disk system. I'm gonna da -da -da. Nope. Only about two or three companies have the ability to build at that level nowadays. Are we getting, mm -hmm. is that where we're going with all this? That we'll only have, you know, half a dozen companies that have the assets and in terms of hardware and, and, uh, capital to build some models and the rest of us will all just be using what they build, you know, be layered on top of that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have your open AI API keys and your Claude API keys. And, you know, you'll, you know, you see them, you know, and things like uh, perplexity AI, you know, you can see, well, I can use any of these backend frontier models. Some mm -hmm. big new thing comes out, chat GPT five comes out and you just start mm -hmm. dialing that in. It's just a little pop-up. Right. And, uh, it's 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 very cool and but your uh, API is just using it as an LLM and uh, you can have your own context buffers you can have you can fine tune it you know um, OpenAI will host that and I mentioned a lot of other places do where you can have your own uh, fine tuned uh, GPT four and mm -hmm. then you can have your own um, your RAG system your own data um, context buffers uh, are enough if you if you can get by. So, yeah, and cause it, once there are, you know, millions, you know, once you can got a two, what is it, a Gemini now? Is it 1 million or 2 million? It's some huge number of tokens. 2 million, for the context. Two million, two million no, in the context, no. and it's, they're looking at doubling it probably to four in Jeez. the not too distant future. Wow. wow. And and I heard the, the lead Gemini guy, he was on some podcast, and I heard him say that pretty soon we're going to be at infinite memory. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is their internal goal, at least. Last time I talked to anybody over That's there pretty good. It. So you'll have every well, It depends chat. on the signal to noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I want to see that needle in a haystack benchmark, but, you know, maybe it's, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they've got some secret sauce for memory. It, I don't know what You what know, it is. yeah, talking to the team that, you know, there it was a focus for them. Having that big, big context was a huge focus, and they devoted large amounts of engineering effort to it. And they think they have a special sauce that they awesome. can keep growing with for a while. And our, but, our best theory is infinity attention, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think that's it, but you know, it's our best theory. Yeah. Who knows? All right. Have we, so have anyway, we solved, have we solved this problem? <laughs> We're at time for, our, for our meeting. We, just, we can time out and go into the next one. Yeah. So Bob, true, true to form, you've uh, been introduced to the meetup where we can take any one slide and turn it into two hours. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we, it could have been one slide tonight. Well, I would have liked it a lot more if we would have only made it to nine.
so that we would have not even <laughs> finished in a, a single slide. So oh, that would have been, okay. it's hard to break records in this meetup, but I think that would have done it. Yeah. 